My name is Dr. Yao Bidiako. I am an immunologist and a research fellow at the West African Center for Cell Biology of Infectious Pathogens at the University of Ghana. Um, I, I guess through high school I realized I was very interested in the sciences. Um, I enjoyed biology um, and chemistry. Um, and then when I went to do my first degree, I took my first immunology course and really found it quite fascinating. The idea, the mechanisms of disease, pathogenesis, um, but then also importantly how immunity um, is generated and potentially how we can um, engineer such immunity. When we think of ourselves as human beings, we think of ourselves as being, you know, completely all, all human as it were, but actually um, it's interesting to know that we have so many bacteria and other um, types of cells in our body that actually um, the ratio of human to bacterial is anywhere from 10 to 1 or 1 to 1. So we are at least as much bacteria as we are human, which I think is quite interesting to think about. So at this point in my career, I'm considered an um, early career or a, sort of a young pr principal investigator. So as a research fellow, I supervise PhD and master's students. Um, and so I'm, I spend less time in the lab now. I spend as much time, I spend even more time thinking about science now because now I have to have the answers. I'm not, I don't have somebody necessarily to go to to ask anymore. Now people come to ask me. Um, so that involves a lot of reading, um, a lot of writing and then looking for, for money for research, so writing proposals. Um, personally, I think the best part is the impact that we can have. I can apply immunology to almost any, any area. So I'm not pigeonholed, I'm not stuck studying HIV or studying uh, coronavirus or studying malaria. Um, immunology is a common thread that runs through nearly any any study, whether it's cancer or an infection, infectious disease. It's very versatile um, and so you can apply it to many different areas and obviously in Ghana, you know, there are evolving challenges that we face. Mm. Memorable experiences. I think, um, you know, in my, in my, during my doctoral work, um, it was my first time using animals. Um, so as part of immunology, sometimes you, have, you cannot experiment on people. So uh, we have to use what we call animal models, which are you know, mice or rabbits or other animals that we use. Um, and I think that was you know, the first time that actually, you know, up, up until that point, a lot of the work I'd done was either reading it in books or doing it in a cell, so on a, in a small plate. Um, but when you actually work with an animal, you realize you know, that this is actually in a, in a living thing, a, you know, a warm-blooded um, organism. Um, and I found that to be um, both interesting but also somewhat humbling um, because, you know, in order to do these experiments, you have to you take the lives of these animals and you don't take it for granted. I think now at this stage, the hardest part is really funding. Um, the research we do is extremely expensive. Um, and the biggest challenge many of us young, uh, up-and-coming researchers face is securing funds to support the work that we do. Because, um, as I said, it costs money to do the science we do and there is very little by way of um, sort of local government support. We are entirely dependent almost on external grants. If you're a student and you're interested in science, um, think of a career beyond simply maybe being a nurse or a doctor. Um, you know, those are great professions and we need obviously more of those as well. But science is bigger than just perhaps being a pharmacist or, or, the, or the typical careers that you see. Um, I, I would encourage sci students interested in science to, you know, take a stop by one of the universities, talk to faculty there about if they are doing any research and just get an idea. Um, get a bit more informed about the breadth of opportunities um, and careers that a train that training in science can afford you. It's it's not as limited as it might seem from the outside looking in.